Here is the review of my 2019 Nuke Proof Scout 275 in concrete gray. I bought this from the frame and built it up. So it's not like a build kit that you will normally see. The Scout frames are identical from 2018 to 2020, which is the current one. It comes with the headset and the cups are already pre-pressed. So it's very easy to build this yourself. Now I put mine, I built it with a 140 millimeter RockShox Pike fork to keep the geometry pretty much as how it comes from the factory. Now I am running 2.8 inch Maxxis ties on there so I got recons in the rear and DHF in the front running tubeless. I have a 150 millimeter dropper post. The bike has a very short seat tube. So the standover height is very low. The frame also has a threaded bottom bracket so it is easy to service and it can take a maximum of a 34 tooth round chain ring. The geometry is a 65 degree head tube angle and a 73 degree seat tube angle. As you can see here, you can see the geometry on the newer bikes versus a reasonably old bike. Right next to it is my 2018 Diamondback Mason 1, which is still a pretty slack bike. It's got a 67 degree head tube angle and a 72 degree seat tube angle because I over forked it a little bit. But you can see that, especially when you put it right on top of each other, that the new bike has a lower bottom bracket. It is much longer top tube. If you can see where the placement of the saddle and the, and the handles are, you can see that it's longer. And you can look at the fork angle too, that it's a lot slacker. I see this question asked more than once on Reddit on whether someone should pick up a Trek Roscoe or a Nuke Proof Scout. As you can see in the pictures, the Mason is outdated compared to the Scout. The Trek Roscoe is even more outdated because it is a less aggressive version of the Mason. The Roscoe is a shorter, slacker seat tube angle, steeper head tube angle version of the Mason. The only advantage you would get for picking the Trek is local bike shop support. The geometry on the Roscoe would have been fine three, four years ago, but geometry have progressed a lot in the past few years. Countries like the UK focuses on hardcore hardtails. If you own the Trek Roscoe, you might eventually upgrade to a new proof Scout, but if you own the Scout, you're not going to want to go to a Roscoe. A top of the line Trek Roscoe costs more than a base model Scout. Pick the Scout. Now what does this modern geometry actually mean? Well, since I have both bikes at the same time, I got used to riding my Scout and I hopped back on my Mason. And the Scout feels like you're in the bike, while the Mason feels like you're on top of the bike. It was very, very telling based on the seat of the pants feel. And when I took the picture and laid them side by side, it definitely confirmed my feeling. The steeper seat tube angle actually allows you to climb over some tech stuff and stay seated and prevents the front wheel from popping up. The longer wheelbase also helps that too, but the seat angle is, is definitely steeper than the older bikes. The slack head tube angle allows you to charge down really really steep terrains really steep rock rollers and it will maintain its geometry it's not going to want to pitch you over the bars the long wheelbase actually makes it extremely stable in the air when you jump and it makes it very very stable in a straight line when you're plowing down chunky terrain like what hardtail party says when you have a modern longer bike you do have to ride differently. You seem to drive the bike with your heels a lot more. So this thing just burns super hard. You can rail the berms, you can pump off it. It'll just turn and be super stable. Whereas the older bike feels like you have to steer it more with the handlebars. And with the lower bottom bracket, I am running shorter cranks. I am running 170 mil cranks versus 175 mil cranks when I had in the Mason. And the pedal is still much lower. So when I was riding the Mason, I was able to just mindlessly pedal through roots and rocks. And then when I jumped back onto the Scout, I was pedal striking a lot. So you definitely 
need to readjust and time your pedals quite a bit. You have to unweight your pedals when you're going up log rolls. So it's definitely not something you can just ride. But the trade-off and the stability and the cornering speed, it's totally worth it. I mean, it doesn't take you that long to be able to sync up your timing and also being able to ratchet up climbs. The frame is also very compliant, even compared to the Mason. As you saw from the picture, if you go back to it, you actually see where the, I believe from the angle of the seat stays, it's a lot shallower. It is not as steep, so I think the angle of the bracing makes it ride less harsh. So the stability of this bike has afforded me to progress a lot more. I've only been riding mountain bike for a year and a half, and this is pretty much the terrain that is given to me. Living in Long Island, New York, there isn't a lot of huge jumps or anything like that, so I'm making the most that I can out of it. Now, admittedly, when I hop back on my Mason, I was able to clean all the features and the terrains that I wasn't able to do before I got off the Mason and got onto the Scout. So in the end, it's still rider, primarily the most important factor in how well you bike or what you can and can't do. But the Scout just feels super, super stable compared to the bike, uh, the older style geometry bikes. Like I said, it feels like you're riding in the bike rather than riding on top of the bike. If any questions, just let me know. Thanks for watching. Bye.